Hi everyone, Materium here with another narrative battle. Yay! Um, this one is a 2500 point battle for the past that will pit a new dwarven force against the forces of the Empire and introduce both of these new groups to the standing narrative. So, uh, should be fun. Let's go ahead and get going. Sunrise broke over the towers of Aberheim shaking the darkness from the old dwarf road as the rider made his approach towards the river city. The lone rider had been traveling for two days now, stopping only for short periods to change horses. His long ride was about to come to an end, but the news he brought would just be the beginning of, even, of an even longer journey. As he approached the southern gates, he was greeted by two guards on horseback, brandishing the Order of the Bear's insignia on their shields. Halt and be recognized, one of the guards shouted. Tithus Brandebard, I bring news from the moot for the Grand Master, the halfling rider shouted, waving a scroll in the air. The second guard approached and looked at the seal upon the scroll. Follow me, I shall escort you to the main keep. Tithus obeyed and followed through the southern gates into the city. Passing the training barracks and the trading centers, he was escorted directly into the center of the city to the tower of the Grand Master. Upon dismounting his pony, he was escorted through the main gates and taken directly to the meeting chamber. This was not his first journey to see the Grand Master, as he was a constant carrier. But today was different. These were not simply normal trading requests, but something much graver. Within ten minutes of his arrival into the chamber, the door opened and a large human male walked in. Covered in a bearskin tunic and brandishing a long sword on his side, the Grand Master was an imposing presence, to say the least. Towering over the small halfling rider, he approached with his hand outstretched. Tithus, it is good to see you again. However, I was not expecting you till the beginning of the planting season. Tithus shook the Grand Master's hand. I was not expecting to be here as well, Grand Master Cartagia. But I bear urgent news from the moot. Our scouts discovered a large contingent of dwarves traveling from the World's Edge Mountains. This was no mere scouting force, but one large enough to mount a significant assault. We sent a representative to speak with the dwarves, but they would not even meet with us. They did not attack, but they would not accept any audience. Uh, our scouts report they bear the symbol of Clan Odhain. This is strange indeed. We've had no issues with the dwarves. I'm surprised at such an incursion. Thank you, Tithus. I shall send our representative to speak with them. They dare not turn down an audience with a representative who speaks directly for the Emperor. I will send word to you and your people of what we find. The Grand Master turned and called for his squire. Reginald, send word to Arch Elector Demarcus that I will need an audience with him and to his detachment. They must be prepared to leave immediately. So, needless to say, the dwarves were not interested in talking to the Empire either, and they met in this mountain pass. Um, as you can see, uh, we're playing Battle of the pa for the Pass. Um, the Temple of Skulls in the top corner is actually an Anvil of Vol. The Broken Tower in the middle is a Haunted Tower. Then we had Mysterious River with a uh, Chimerian Quicksand in the middle of it there. Uh, and mysterious forests, the small little hillock there with the uh, winged figure on it is a altar of Cain, and then the hill in the back was a scree slope. Uh, the wall that's in the front left is just a normal wall. So, uh, <coughs> definitely a good, uh, good setup, although uh, both armies think that the river is going to end up causing them problems in the long run. And uh, just for clarity's sake, uh, so you don't get confused, I was a, an observer to this game, I'm not playing either side. So, Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started with the dwarf side's deployment. Uh, we obviously have a gyro bomber there. Next to them is a unit of 15 hammer or no, sorry, 15 Thunderers. Uh, with that unit is uh, the Runesmith Draxon, who has uh, the shield, a shield, the fire ring of Thori, a rune of spellbreaking, and a rune of stone. 
Uh, next to that is a big old unit of... Ooh, I think that's a big old unit of uh, of uh, Longbeards. Uh, 25 of them from the look of it. The other runesmith is there, uh, Smith Grosson. Uh He has the double rune of spellbreaking, rune of stone, and a great weapon. Uh, behind them up on the hill is a great cannon with the rune of forging on it. Uh, so pretty standard layout on that side. Uh, continuing on here, we have a unit of 20 hammers with uh, King Agram in there with three runes of cleaving, shield bearers, two runes of fortitude, and a rune of stone. And uh, his BSB, Thane Borixen, who is has a great weapon and a rune of s uh, banner with a rune of sn slowness times three on it. Next to that is a, another unit of long beards, and then a ten man unit of iron drakes uh, to finish out. So for the Empire, in the back here, we have a big old unit of uh, Inner Circle Knights. There's 13 Inner Circle Knights there with uh, Captain Horatio Cavendish, who is the BSB for the army, uh, a warrior priest, D'Angelo Targone, and a uh, wizard lord, level 4, Lady Alisonia the White, uh, level 4 of Light. Directly ahead of that, we have a unit of five Outriders, uh, a steam tank in front of that, we have a Hellblaster volley gun, and uh, the chariot there is his general, Archlector Demarcus, on the War Altar of Sigmar, with the horn of Sigums Sigismund, the one that gives it terror. Uh, in the back there, you have a unit of four Demigriffs with full command, and the Razor Standard. Uh, in front of that is a big unit of uh, 30, well, 26 halberdiers uh, with one detachment of five hand gunners and one detachment of six. And back there on the hill, you can see the halflings there are actually a stand-in for a mortar and its crew. And this just gives you a better look at the other side of his deployment. Um, only other group I haven't talked about yet is another unit of five Outriders there on the end. So Empire Turn 1 was pretty uneventful. Uh, everything else, or everything in the army moved up, um, but he had a really low roll for the Steam Tanks movement, so it started blocking up the detachments, and uh, he didn't want to get into the river with anything, so he, he really kind of got tripped up with a lot of his movement here. Um, and he didn't want to take dangerous train checks for the knights marching over the wall, so they didn't go very far. So this is pretty much where everything stands. Um, his magic was shut down by the dwarves. The only thing he uh, actually got off was the mortar did a direct hit on the gyrobomber, but then only managed to roll a single wound. Um, so the gyrobomber took a single wound and maybe another dude off of a unit. Um, so then we go into Dwarf's turn two, and uh, this is pretty much it. Um, they slid up a very, very little amount. Um, didn't really have to do a whole heck of a lot here. Oh, and I guess uh, I, I see that magic card now. Uh, that was right. The uh, Empire got Net of Amontok off on the Iron Drakes to kind of hold them back a little bit, but I don't think it was necessary. But the big show for the uh, Dwarves turn one was the cannon. Um, the cannon blew through the unit of Halberdiers, did two wounds to them, ended up hitting the general on the, the war altar for two wounds, and did four wounds to the chariot, and killed the demigriff. So it was just a, a huge shot right down the middle. Um and definitely hurt. So, uh, we go into Empire turn two. Uh, everything on this flank moves up. Uh, the Outriders went through the forest, found out that it was a fear-causing forest. Big deal. Um, the Large Knight unit is sweeping around this side of the forest, hoping to be able to cross over into the flank and just kind of tear down the dwarf line. And everything else pretty much moved up. Um, as you can see, uh, the Empire sent one of their detachments in the river. They found out that that river was also a fear-causing river. 
um, but it's slowing everything down so they can't really do a whole heck of a lot. Uh, the one unit of Outriders up at the top there did move up against the building, hoping to sneak around that. But the only reason he did that was that he forgot that the building was a haunted mansion. And uh, he's going to actually lose one of those Outriders this turn to the haunted mansion's attacks. Um, so then he, in Magic Phase, gets off Speed of Light, irresistibly, um, which was good. Uh, less good was the fact that the miscast killed either two or three of the knights in the unit. Um, it was the one where they everything adjacent to the caster takes a strength 10 hit, and it just blew those knights to kingdom come. Um, oh, and to add to the Empire's bad luck, uh, the steam cannon was, or the steam tank was going to try and shoot the dwarves' cannon to stop it from killing his general, and misfired and did three wounds to itself. So, uh, things just aren't looking good for the Empire right now. They're, they're really kind of stuck behind the river, tripping over themselves, and, and everything they've got is just misfiring. Um, so then, on Dwarves turn two, uh, the Dwarves come up a little bit more. Um, they're really more than happy to let the Empire take the dangerous terrain test of moving through that quicksand uh, to come to them. And the gyrocopter comes around and hides behind the forest, which actually is going to hurt him because he forgets about it for two turns. Um, but, yeah, again, dwarves don't need to move all that much. Over here, the iron drakes go to work and kill all but one of the outriders. But that outrider apparently didn't like his friends, and so felt no compulsion to turn and run when they all died horribly to strength five armor-piercing dwarf craziness. Um, but again, <laughs> because he, there's only one here, the Empire player ends up forgetting about him for at least a turn, uh, so might as well have run. Um, so then we go into Empire turn three. The Empire Knights succeed in a charge uh, on the Iron Gut, or the Iron Drakes. Um, their stand and shoot ends up inflicting one or two more casualties on the knights, I don't quite recall. But now, since they're both within the range of this statue, of the, the Altar of Cain there, there's going to be a lot of crazy uh, frenzy action going on, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so, over here, uh, I don't remember what happened, but... Steam Tank might have taken another wound here. Um, I, I apologize. I just don't remember what happened. Um, maybe the Steam Tank was shot last turn by something by the Dwarves, but it ends up again rolling piss poor for movement and doesn't even cross the river yet. Um, over here, the now weakened uh, Outriders make their way and squeeze around the uh, Thunderers there so that they've got a charge set up for next turn against the Cannon. Um, the Empire player knows he needs to shut down the cannon because the river's just holding him up too much and he's sitting right in the middle of a freaking bearded shooting gallery and he needs to do something about that. Um, over here he moves the... because uh, he doesn't want to risk the dangerous terrain test for the quicksand. He is just slowly moving the halberdiers across the, the quicksand. Um, he ends up moving up the uh, his handgunner detachment too, but at this point the Thunders have been thinning them down. Uh, so he's just going to use it as, to try to redirect or to, to block him from eating all three of these units. Um, and then his demigriffs are just stuck behind, too far behind the line, so they're, they're going to reform to try and sweep around this way now. I, I don't know if that was helpful. Um... They're really not going to accomplish much this entire game. <laughs> and what's more is he set up another just ugly straight line for that cannon to just rip through. So I, I don't necessarily think this was the best course of action. Um, so then the mortar ends up putting in work again. I mean, for strength two attacks, it's killing a stupid number of dwarves. Uh, he ends up landing it just as you see it. Ends up stripping 
five hammers away and two of the long beards there. So I think at this point it's actually, I mean, he hasn't gained any actual points with it, but it's killed more models than it frankly had much of a right to needing sixes to wound. So uh, magic didn't do much. I think the dwarves spell eatered something. Uh, but combat goes here. The knights are easily using their armor to block everything that the, uh, the iron drakes have, but the iron drakes are just within the 12 inch stubborn bubble. So it doesn't really matter how much wounds the, the knights are doing. They're just sticking and it's not really, not really accomplishing a whole lot. Um, so we go into dwarf turn, I think this is four, uh, three or four. I don't remember. Um, the gyrocopter ends up flying over to where you see it here. It tries to drop a bomb on the steam tank. It scatters and hits the unit of uh, the detachment there and ends up killing only a single guy. Um, considering how much stuff is over there, I think the Empire player was pretty fortunate for that to have happened. Um, I have no idea why this picture was taken. This might just have been just something to show where everything was standing because I don't think the dwarves moved at all other than the gyrocopter because uh, he's oh he, he they did they formed a straight line uh, he wants the the Empire players to hit him because he wants that extra five up ward save for the parry and in shooting the dwarf cannon goes to work again um, ends up actually missing the unit of halberdiers but lands directly on the head of Arch Lecter Demarcus and destroys him and the the war altar um, luckily uh, I think the Empire troops had been resigned that their glorious leader was going to meet his end at the end of dwarf cannonballs so none of them panicked and <laughs> Uh, at his demise. So uh, that's the only plus side here. <laughs> um, and again, in close combat, the knights are just slaughtering dwarves, but they're just not doing it fast enough. I think there's one or two dwarves left here. I can't really see well. Um, but again, they're just within that stubborn bubble. So they're like leadership 10 rerollable. They're not going anywhere. And so the Empire turn starts off with the Halberdiers charging into the Hammers. Uh, they did succeed the charge despite the Rune of Slowness trying to slow them down. Uh, but the bigger issue for the Halberdiers here is that Rune of Slowness, because it's been stacked three times, makes them always strike last. So they don't really have any chance to kill off the Hammers before they're just going to get the living tar beaten out of them. Um... The steam gun or the steam cannon finally made it into this group of iron of uh, long bit beards here. Um, it just it took forever, um, but he ended up doing like four steam three or four steam points to move it. So it's going to be just a stupid number of impact hits uh, once we actually get to close combat. So that that he's got that going for him. Uh, then back here, again, the demigriffs are trying. They're, they're going to stand there and try and support, I guess, when that one tiny unit of, of the handgunners gets blown away. But uh, there's really not much for them to do here. They're still stuck behind the river, and the, the blocks of combat are just blocking everything up. Um, I think he, he really got kicked in the face by his deployment here. Um... And here is another shot of the wonderful mortar. Uh, magic was shut down again. Um, the, the dwarf player put a lot of points into canceling magic and has done a good job at it so far. Um, but yeah, the, the mortar ended up landing a little bit of a scatter off of the long beards, but still hit enough to take five of them off the back, which was pretty impressive. Um, and then we go into close combat. The uh, Hammers lose another three guys, but as you can see, they just absolutely decimated that unit of Halberdiers and broke them. Uh, and then when they crossed over the dangerous train, I think they lost another three. 
um, as they fled there. So uh, the dwarves decided they didn't want to break their line, so they just let them go, figuring they, rightly so, that they have nothing left to fear. Um, so the steam tank slams into the unit of, of uh, Longbeards here and only manages to kill five dwarves on the impact hits. Um, I think he was rolling like a D6 plus 3D3 impact hits at strength six. So at least my brain for math said he should have probably done a little better than that. But even if he did, it didn't matter because they're in that stubborn bubble. They're just not going to go anywhere. Um, finally, the knights kill the last of the iron drakes and manage to turn around um, and face the back of here. Uh, my main thought here is too little too late. Um, the dwarves still have the vast majority of their army and the, the empire forces are in shambles. Um, unless these knights can put in a ridiculous amount of work, I, I don't see them impacting much. Um, and I guess we forgot to show the charge into the cannon, but uh, so the outriders charged into the cannon, they did no wounds, and the cannon crew killed two outriders. <laughs> I, I I don't, in all honesty, I don't even have a comment for that. Um, there's there's just not much to say about outriders being murdered by cannon crew. I I just yeah. Um, so then we go into dwarf turn. I think this is five. I'm it, at part of this game. I I had to leave to go put my daughter to bed. So the other the players are actually taking pictures. So I kind of lost track here. But uh, here come the hammers into the side of that steam tank, and uh, yeah, it's it's going to be ugly. Um, that steam tank is getting no real attacks this turn because there's no steam points in it, and it's it's facing a lot of beatdown. Um, and over here, the uh, gyro bomber, he's actually on the hill where that empty base is, but there's no way he's going to balance there. But he flew over, tried to bomb the knights, and it went way off course. Um, so no no real worries there, um, which is good because the knights are really the only big unit that he's got left if he can't get those demigriffs into something. Um, and then he turned uh, his thunderers here to face inward. Um, I don't know if he was expecting to be able to get another some shots off on the uh, horsemen or or on the knights or whether he was just going to get in there to try and move them so he can't get into the back end, but I don't know. Uh, and as you can see here, the other long beards charge into that detachment. Uh, no real shooting of value. Uh, the long beards here deleted the attachment of, detachment of three guys, but the impressive thing was that those three handgunners actually managed to kill two dwarven longbeards before they themselves got butchered. So uh, that was pretty impressive. Um, at this point, those det that detachment and the mortar may very well be the Empire MVP. Um, then over here with the steam gun... Um, Everything, all the stuff the dwarves did inflicted three more wounds on it, so the steam tank is sitting at three wounds and obviously didn't do any damage to the dwarf. Alright, so start of Empire turn. And the more I look at this, I think this is actually turn six, which means that I think the game went seven turns, but whatever. Um, the night unit manages a long charge into the flank of the of the long beards here. Um this might be a pretty good matchup, but there's there's just a lot of dwarf bodies to go through. Um the halberdiers ended up rallying and they reformed this way mainly so that they didn't block the demigriffs from getting into something. Uh in what they would have assumed was turn six, I think. Um, but again, I, I, I think the story of this whole thing at this point is just too little too late. Um, so there is... I don't even remember what spell they were trying to get off here. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it was another miscast. 
Yeah, it was another miscast because the the caster girl has taken, uh, Lady Alisonia Elis- uh, has taken a point of damage and she killed off another one of her knights. Um, that might be Speed of Light again. I don't quite remember. And here, the Dwarf Cannon crew will kill another Outrider and break the last one remaining. So, uh, that those Outriders totally failed to take out the Cannon. Um, in combat here, the Dwarves just absolutely brutalized the steam tank. Um, it really didn't have any chance whatsoever. <laughs> Okay, and I guess at this point it didn't go into a turn seven because we end because the dwarves were at the bottom. So bottom of turn uh, six, uh, the dwarven gyrocopter tries to get the points for this one unit of outrider. Ends up actually landing a direct hit on him with the bomb and failing to wound. So uh, the empire player will at least keep those points. Um, at this point, I'm just trying to look for some bright spots for him. And, yeah, this is pretty much where the knights end up. Um, after the destruction of the steam tank, the other two dwarf units, the hammers and the, the longbeards there, had just reformed, so he had charges all around him. Um, so he's surrounded by beards. Uh, the only real hope is that the unit doesn't die, so he gets to keep the points. Um, but that's a pretty long shot. And as you can see here, it is a long shot that did not succeed. Um, the dwarf unit in the front, the longbeards were killed, uh, but the only thing from the Empire to survive there was the BSB. Uh, so it came down to uh, points, because he didn't technically get tabled, but uh, it is pretty obvious where that's going to leave us. So. King Argrim Grudge Hammer's shield bearers sat him down to look over the broken force of Sigmar's people. It was odd to him. Why had the Empire so suddenly swept down his lines? Madness. Or perhaps a worse fate. Chaos. The king sat baffled by the battle that had just occurred. His, cans and his cannon had fired a warning shot into a chariot and part of their line. His forces is even withheld from the charge. Argrim's thoughts were broken once his most trusted thane, Borixen, spoke. My king, their forces have been routed. Shall we pursue them? No, Argrim stated. He motioned for his forces to make camp. If they return, we will fight. But they're not our true enemy, for now. As night washed over the camp, Suddenly a startling re realization came to Agram. The Empire may have only been investigating what the dwarves were doing. This astonishment was quickly replaced with a feeling of anger. What right did they have to question a king of the Dawi? He would reach Clan Hammerfeld, and no one would stop his march. As he closed his eyes and sank into the embrace embrace of sleep, he muttered one last sentiment. By my oath, or Grimnir's, I shall return the Hammerfell to their homes. So, wow. A great showing for uh, Clan Odhine in their first entry into the narrative. Um, <laughs> I, I wish I could say this was a fair fight, but it really wasn't. Um... <laughs> The, I, I think the battle for the pass favors the dwarves anyway, and to add a river into that, um, I just, I, I watched this and I felt so bad for the Empire. <laughs> um, but I gotta say, the Empire player took it like a champ and, and did his best to, to throw down Mighty. Um, I think there was some issues with his deployment. Uh, he definitely should not have had the demigriffs so far back they ended up spending the whole time tripping over the rest of his army and the only thing they did was take a cannonball in the face um in a much bigger issue uh i don't like 
the Arch Lector on the Altar of Sigmar. I mean, it's it's cool and it's flavorful, but being that characters on chariots operate under the same rules as, as characters riding monsters, um, specifically in that when a cannonball hits them, it hits both, um, is dumb. Um... <laughs> I don't think there's any other any other way for it because it basically means that in any sort of army where you can expect to see cannons, those characters, particularly when they're serving as the general of the force, are just going to get annihilated in in very short order. So, um, I think the empire probably should have also have left light at home and brought metal against the dwarves, but, um. All in all, he did the best he could with what he had. Um, as far as the dwarf list, I thought it was pretty solid for what he was up against. Um, he ended up having enough magic defense to pretty much shut down the Empire's magic, uh, except for the turns where he miscast, and in both cases, the miscast hurt the Empire far more than getting the spell off helped them. Um, the Rune of Forging is broken. Um, particularly the way it states that it allows a reroll any time you roll a misfire, so it's not limited to the first time like the old Rune of Forging was, or, or anything like that, so that's that's pretty busted. Um, the Gyro Bomber was a non-issue. Um, I've played them a couple of times with the Hammerfell, and they were awesome. Um... I just think they're going to either be totally awesome or absolutely worthless from what I've seen. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of middle ground there. Um, but all in all, uh, I, I thought the uh, Clan Odhines list was strong. Um, the Hammerers are good. The more I see them, the, the more I realize that the only way to deal with them is just never let them get into combat with you. Uh, that many high strength attacks just need to be shot off the board, or if you can squeeze it through, magic them off the board, but uh, they're absolutely beastly if you can get into combat with them. Um, so, my, my hope from now on is just to avoid the unit and uh, blow them the hell up if I can get to it. <laughs> um, but, all in all, it was a good... Uh, good game, a nice entry into the, uh, <laughs> of the dwarves, uh, or rather the Odhine dwarves and the Empire into the narrative, and it's going to be kind of fun to see the overzealousness of King Agram, uh, coming to help his cousins, the Hammerfells, uh, regain their home, and exactly how much more trouble that's going to bring as he is using a completely scorched earth tactic to get there. So uh, we're kind of looking forward to that. And uh, I know definitely the, the Empire player, this is actually Lord Alphonius, who is also the Bretonian player in this narrative. Um, he's glad to get another one of his armies introduced so that he can take a break from Bretonia, as he's been playing a lot of it lately. Um, but So this should work for everybody. Um, I've, we did have another battle this night where I actually take on the same list of these dwarves with my uh, demon army. Uh, it's not part of the narrative, but I'm hoping to have that battle report up uh, either tonight or tomorrow. So, uh, all in all, I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, if you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, uh, comment if you liked what we did. If you don't like <laughs> something, uh, definitely love to talk about it, but... Uh, all in all, uh, it was f a fun game to watch, a fun battle report to do, and we will catch you next time.